Bonjour, bonjour, friends and lover. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're talking about florets. Ladies and gentlemen, before you're watching this video, please subscribe to my channel as usual. Activate the little bell if you want to see a bit more of my videos. And also follow me on Instagram. So anyway, today we're talking about florists. I'm really happy to talk about it. I tell you already that this video is going to be pretty long. So in the description box, you have all the fragrance I'm, I'm going to talk about. And if you want to switch to a, um, like go quicker to a fragrance that you want or you like or you want to hear a bit more then go directly to this one because it's going to be very long so just a little bit uh, of introduction about Floris about this brand is really like a family business it's nine generation of family of perfumers so it's since 1730 so it's technically one of the oldest independent family perfumer and it's one of the only appointed um, perfumer to her majesty the queen it feels very like an authentic brand mixing traditional and something quite modern as well and also you need to um, this is really like British like and it stays very classy, elegant but very traditional from the British culture as well. So they've got a very beautiful shop in German Street and it was actually the first one uh, that was created. Just a little fact as well, they uh, opened a factory in Devon in uh, 1989 and the lady that have done the opening is just Princess Diana so it's really like an important brand I think in the UK like it's part of the history so they're doing very unique and timeless and quite vintage sometimes um, fragrances so I hope you're gonna enjoy it as much as I did I divided in the brand in four categories so there's not gonna be all the fragrances presented here I've done a lot already so we'll see there's four categories the first category i wanted to talk about is the fruity family so i chose three fragrances from there which actually were kind of my favorite uh, from this kind of family and also i think the more representative of what they have and the first one is a bergamotto di positano i'm gonna re-smell it there Mm. So basically what I like about this fragrance is um, you probably expect like a cologne that is extremely fresh, it's extremely citrusy and very limey and things like that. It is but it's much more like a, I would say warmer and a, a bit rounder, um, nearly candied like a, a bergamot. So bergamot usually feels quite green, limey but this one is really like... There's something very candid behind and that's probably because you've got a touch of orange blossom to soften the composition so it really makes me think like a soft cocktail a bit sugary but slightly greener it really makes me travel uh, on a holiday in italy really uh, but in a very delicate way so usually when you smell like the bergamot from italy it's like very sparkling well this is like a british interpretation i would say it's a bit more rounder warmer a bit more cozy um probably in great britain we need a bit of warmth because it's not that warm <laughs> but yeah that's how it feels so I did really enjoy it and uh, I, I think uh, I do like the fact that it's not as sharp as the other one so it's probably something you can have in the daytime during the spring or even winter time why not 
second one and something that I really really enjoy is called Cherry Blossom. So Cherry Blossom is, oh god, it's um, the interpretation of a, a cherry but um, you feel extremely candid and slightly flowery, so like a rose flower. It's quite funny because it's meant to be celebrating the Japanese tradition. She's called Anami, I think, and it's basically a tradition where Japanese go to a park with their family and they're having sake and you know some dishes, traditional dishes and they sit um, under the cherry blossom tree and you know the petals like they are flying and it's very like a poetic moment and you know all this sakura type of uh, stuff um, in Japan this is really it's really the idea when I smell that I can really travel there, I can really see all the petals falling. It's still quite hairy, not too um, sweet, but it really feels like very poetic. Like if I could give it a color, it would probably be a pink and it's like a soft symphony. A bit kawaii as well, but again, there's a tiny warm accord with sandal which is quite creamy, but still quite hairy. So all the fragrances of florists, that's what I saw, all still always a bit hairy which is really nice so I did really enjoy this one and uh, if I could have it to my collection that would be lovely <laughs> and then my favorite one and it's actually the new fragrance which is called Neroli Voyage and uh, I don't know if you're following me since a, a long time you probably know that Neroli is one of my favorite ingredients just because it makes me think of baby powder and it makes travel it's quite creamy but still quite uplifting um, this Neroli Voyage I really love at first sight. At first sight I was like, oh Jesus Christ. Ooh. It really smells like, a, for me, like makeup. Also, it's a Neroli that is slightly greener, but honeyed at the back, slightly warmer. There's something that smells extremely clean as well and slightly spicy with the ginger, I think. Like... That's it, it really smells very clean and uh, I've tried it on my skin and the longevity is incredible for something that smells narrowly because usually like fruity doesn't stay that long and this I was quite like happy with it but it's, it's beautiful because it's very relaxing, very soothing, it's again not too sharp, it's like a warmer dry down which I really appreciate because you know no, oh, this is something that I'm probably gonna buy like for spring or and summer but yeah, we, we're always looking for like our Cologne uh, summer fragrance, but we never, we, we always have this sharpness, but this gives a bit like of comfort and I absolutely adore it. It makes me travel. I can picture like some trees where I'm having a walk on the seaside. It's just really beautiful. I, I wanted to talk, uh, I had a lot of people like talking to me about their hood, how are they hood and stuff like that. Um, there's one that is called Honeywood that is absolutely wonderful. So Honeywood with Neroli Voyage is probably my two favorite of the brand. Um, what I really like is usually I'm very scared of hood because uh, you know when you use too much hood in a fragrance it's very intoxicating. I do like it sometimes but not for daytime or not all the time you know. Now I quite enjoy something that is nicely balanced with not too much sharpness and things like that. And I don't like when the hood feels very dirty, you know, that very dirty hood. I don't like this. I want it to be nicely balanced with something else. And I was very scared as well because usually when it's too honeyed, it's a bit heady. But Floris makes all the fragrance like very um, hairy, elegant. Even if it's going to stay and give you good sillage, it will never be too much on one ingredient. So. I don't know how they manage, but it looks, it, it smells very, very elegant. So it's an oriental woody, my favorite family. And it feels extremely velvety, soft, like a, you know, velvet sofa, and you're having your, like a bourbon cocktail. This is really that. It slightly have a touch of incense behind smokiness that is beautiful. And it, it's extremely rich fragrance. It's rich, it's round, it's opulent. It's relaxing uh, the honey is slightly sticky as well so yeah it's the, the stickiness gives a lot of uh, charm uh, to it and you feel very attracted to the fragrance 
so I would say something very sensual or probably like again like for when you want a bit like of comfort and warmth during summer where did I put my all right <laughs> there it is uh, but yeah it's very like a gourmand as well but it's not too much because sometimes we smell gourmand like for example that smell extremely like I can compare it to a Baccarat for example 540 it's extremely extremely gourmand this got a very very nice balance and um, I feel I will never be bored of that fragrance it's so charming like um, it slightly is a bit like enigmatic churchy you know like um, this is definitely for like a gentleman but a bit like that want to impress you know it's beautiful you're gonna hear me saying beautiful a lot because I, I, I'm really I really like this brand to be honest so that's why I wanted to share about it and then we have another one that is called German Street so obviously uh, to be like a little reminder of the first store and um, so German Street again is I think one of my favorite like um, and usually I'm not that keen on that kind of fragrance so it's a citrus aromatic so at the beginning you feel extremely sharp extremely vivid elegant and then you've got something very much greener I think it's the juniper uh, so it nearly feels foresty and then you can smell a bit of warmness at the back like slightly warmer rounder at the back so again like feels like the slightly honeyed hambury at the back so it's quite nice it's not just a citrus uh, that's gonna smell like a barbershop or very sharp this one's got a bit of warmth behind but very very delicate for me that's extremely elegant he slightly make me think of an aftershave lotion but with some warmth and depth to it that's why I wouldn't mind to wear it because it's got something different to it so jam in street for me like is one of the best scent for a daytime for a gentleman um, if you want to nearly smell like you just shave or something this is really nice then you've got leverhood so that's the second hood that was launched with honeyhood they were launched together and uh, this one yeah no like um i don't know when i first spray it like i quite enjoyed it and then when it dries, it's actually a bit better when it dries. I don't know, I I feel it's a nice leather hood type of scent, but there's something quite plasticky at the end that I don't know what it is. Like nearly like um, the, the, the wheel of a car really like this type of uh, feeling that I really don't like like at the beginning I saw it was like a biker jacket you know um, a bit more um, with a strong character you know like but I'm not really keen on this one I have to say it feels like too simplistic I just feel a bit of leather no it's kind of very minty nearly minty you know green and then i can feel a bit like of uh, this dirtiness of the hood and i don't like that type of hood that's really i was really disappointed about this one but yeah it have to happen i guess um uh, but you better try it because maybe i'm just annoyed by this kind of plasticky scent and i really don't like when something smells a bit artificial and that's what i smell unfortunately i prefer to be honest with you but maybe you won't feel it that way but for me yeah there was one in the exclusive collection so those are exclusive uh, collection you've got one that is called 1927 that i really like which has got a lot of ldl so it nearly feels like a bubble of champagne fragrance with a touch of narcissus so slightly greener it's my favorite flower so i did really love that um there's a bit of vanilla and patchouli so if it's quite warm at the back and then you've got a lot of like um other ones uh, like this 1927 19 uh, blah 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 and blah blah but uh, I don't remember those fragrances so I can't talk about it but um, yeah this one did really like then there was the floral and to present the floor I've got this lovely box over here which is really nice and oh god and inside there's all my samples <laughs> 
all the samples. But yeah, because I needed to try it before, like uh, all of them, you know, like uh, on the skin to see how it feels, you know. Um, but yeah, so that is some of the florals that I quite enjoy. So I'm going to talk about them. And um, you've got, first of all, the bouquet de la reine. So it's the queen's bouquet, a flower. And uh, it's really, it's what is interesting is um, this fragrance was first launched in 1860. Can you imagine? So long time ago. And it was reinterpreted, uh, so a bit more modern uh, interpretation that we have. And um, it was actually uh, relaunched in 2002 for the Golden Jubilee of the Queen. Uh, so it was quite important. <laughs> and um, this is probably a fragrance. Where is it? I think it's one of the floral that I enjoy. Oh la la, that I enjoy the most. Um, it's got something very clean at the back as well, like an early, like you, you're washing something on the mach washing machine. And then you've got all this bouquet of flower, lots of violet, ylang ylang, so it's very radiant. When I smell it, I can see, you know, like a clear sky, like it, it's really like a field of flower, but very open air. But the, the first thing it makes me think of is wedding day, really. Um, so they've got... Um, a fragrance is called Wedding Bouquet, so I guess it's more adaptable, but I don't remember smelling this one, so anyway. But this for me really makes me think of purity, simplicity, and um, this is probably a fragrance that, yeah, it's really like a wedding day. It makes me think of a wedding day. It's very pale, white. It's extremely romantic. It's purely poetic. And what is nice, usually, I don't really like, like roses and stuff like that, and very florals one. But this is a soft hairy without being too light it's really for a princess like i have to say like it's a it's for a delicate innocent princess for my daytime springy daytime for sure I, I really enjoy it and then you've got my favorite one of the floral which is uh, chypress i'm gonna say chypress i don't know if you say chypress but whatever uh, so i took this one with me in Brittany on holiday because i am oh, i love it so much Oh la la, it's so nice. So basically, it's uh, another interpretation of Chypre Accord. So it's smelling a bit like greener, but slightly uh, citrusy at the beginning. So there's a lot of lemon, so it feels very sharp. But it perfectly mixed with the Ylang Ylang that is very radius, luminous, and uh, a bit of neroli. And it's got, what I like about this fragrance is a bouquet of flower a bit as well, but um, You've got a numbery uh, undertone, so it feels quite warmer. So if you like something quite florally, quite romantic, but it's got a bit of an of warmth, that's probably what you need. Like uh, it suits more my personality. That's my type of floral because it's got lots of femininity, but then it's got a character that is hidden at the back, and that is so lovely. It makes me think like of. Um, Yeah, it's just like um, a very classy outfit. It's simple, but it's powerful. We have uh, one of the ones that I don't have the sample here. That's so sad. But I did really love it. Is I think I think my favorite floral with uh, Chypress is Lily of the Valley. You really need to try that, even if you're a man. Have a little try. This one is one of the oldest one of the collection because it's lasted. It's from the 18th century. 18th century <laughs> please so you've got of course lily of the valley but it's got a very like um green undertone it feels extremely timeless like when i smell that i smell something extremely modern which is really really weird you know and it, it, again it's a scent like bouquet de la reine that smells very innocent that smells very happy and radiant but it's got a very green undertone that i really liked because it's not just a lily of the valley and that's it. <laughs> it's got a little bit more powerful and depth to it. So if you love a lily scent, um, this is one of the favorite I've ever smelled. It's, it's really beautiful. It's very poetic. It's like a violin lyric. Oh my God, I'm going too far. Um, but yeah. <laughs> a night scented jasmine. This one I really did enjoy it. If you do love a jasmine, you're probably gonna love this one because 
Jasmine usually are interpreted into fragrance into something quite simple, uh, like a light floral. Well, this one is really, like they say, night scented. It's it got a bit of warmness, it's got a deepness. When I smell it, I don't smell white flowers. I really smell something deep, like a deep, an evening flower. A very, like, um, I don't know, um, like the beginning on a, of an evening fragrance. Very elegant, but slightly warmer. I couldn't, I think this, I would even enjoy it more wearing in the summer, but during the night when it starts to be a bit more chilly. That, that's exactly how it is. And you've got a touch of Narcissus, favorite flower ever. So it smells nearly like a narcotic at the end. There's something intoxicating and very green behind and that's the Narcissus and it's absolutely stunning. You've got a touch of violet as well, so it smells nearly like powdery, extremely powdery. Like you, you're dipping into a um, loose powder case, it's really really nice. But all of them are not very strong and opulent, they're very hairy. It's really like a, a fragrance that is mainly meant to be intimistic or to be shared with your lover or something like that. That is for me what is florist is, is really something intimistic, classy. You know, you don't have to give too much um, to be like very elegant, you can, you can keep it for yourself. Usually uh, the people that are the less louder are the smarter for me. So this is really why I'm smelling at all the classier one, you know. Like, you don't need to be loud to be elegant and classy. That's exactly what is florist for me. Oh, there's another one that is called White Rose. And this one, it was the... I did like it. It was a, one of the oldest fragrances as well. But it's too much on the rose and I'm not really a fan of rose. But it, this one is slightly powdery. And when I smell it, I smell like a... A rose cupcake I would say it really did me make me think of Marie Antoinette uh, I don't know why because um, it really like a scent that make me think of the one of the most vintage scent I smelled before like the, when when they were all wearing just roses under the dress that really what me makes me think of but it's really nice it's beautiful as well it wouldn't be for me though I can't I think I'll have to mix it to wear it yeah but it's beautiful because usually i hate rose fragrance but i have to say this one it's got something i would i'm gonna be mixing it with a like a hood fragrance just pure hood just to see how it goes i'm sure it's gonna be amazing I, I, i'll tell you that so after this uh there were also a three other fragrance that i wanted to talk quickly about there's number 81 uh 81 89 that is one of the iconic fragrances as it was worn by Ian Fleming so if you don't know Ian Fleming he wrote the James Bond uh, books and he also talked about this fragrance in the novel so um, I mean it's quite an iconic fragrance like if you didn't try Floris before that if there's one fragrance you need to try uh, to know about their history is probably this one and I have to say it's one of my favorite after re-smelling and re-smelling all the fragrance it's one of my favorite because it's got a DNA that is extremely timeless that I will probably never get bored of it's got everything in one fragrance it's like they try to mix everything to get something the essence of modernity forever you know what I mean so what is interesting is at the beginning you can really smell a bit of lavender so it's very soothing but it's not just a barbershop fragrance, it's not just that, there's a touch of rose and the rose gives sensitivity to it. So of course, when you smell it, for me it's the scent of a gentleman. Like if you want to be a true British gentleman, you have to have this fragrance, I would say. Like for daytime, I think it's extremely charming. I think it really represents the, 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 the British cliché <laughs> when you smell it. Um, you know, like uh, this is this is how I see um, men sometimes in in, in uh, the cliche I see is the man is not too loud, he's a bit like romantic, is 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 classy, um, he's a bit sensitive as well, 
that's really how it smells for me. It's not always the case, but you know, uh, this is this is the cliche that usually we have. It's not just hooligans in, Brit uh, in Great Britain. And uh, the neroli inside is very sharp as well. So it gives a bit of like powderiness to the fragrance and it smells uh, slightly mossy as well, green at the end. It's, it's really rich. It's not something very fresh and uh, you know, blah, blah. It's thick, it's really thick and dense fragrance. It's extremely vibrant uh, on the opening, but then at the end it smells very refined and more ambery and greener. It's really a fragrance that I couldn't even describe it to you. You need to go and have a smell because it really has something different. I think I, I never smelled something like that before and um, I think it's probably the most iconic fragrance of the brand. So it really represents it. It's got all that hairy, elegance, softness and velvetiness, but then it's got a warmer undertone without being too much. And I think this is really def uh, giving a good definition to them. There's was another one I wanted to talk about is Vert Fougère. Where is it? Ah, Vert Fougère. Um, that at the beginning I really liked and then I hated it. <laughs> um, so it's a woody fougère and the fougère smells very minty, um, aromatic, nearly like a barbershop fragrance, like a proper one. Um, oh. This one's got like a very smoky accord, like inside, like it smells... I don't know, it nearly smells like drugs, like, uh, like you know, like uh, cannabis or something. Yeah, something like that, and very minty at the same time. I'm sad because at the beginning I did really like it, and now I'm like... It smells nearly like a medical, so this is, this is not for me. And then there was Santal. Uh, I heard a lot about Santal before. And uh, people usually didn't really like it. So I love sandalwood scent. And I have to say it's a really beautiful one. It's got a slightly more masculine undertone. So it's not as creamy sandalwood as usual. But it's a santal that is slightly warmed up and it's got that incense churchy type of feeling. So for again, for daytime, that's really, really nice. But this is a fragrance that the first time you will try it, you're probably not gonna really like it. You need to give it some time. It's like I tried it a few times on my skin and that's why I could really appreciate it because the dry down is amazing. Because when you first smell it, it smells very superficial fragrance. And then after when you put it on the skin, you really have a dry down in vanilla, a bit more greener, a bit more oriental as well, which is really interesting. So I really recommend this fragrance actually because it's got something very different again, but it's got all of them. It's got like a slightly like barbershop gentlemany kind of touch to it. So, um, so yeah. So it's more difficult for ladies, I think, to wear uh, some of the fragrance. But I mean, I mean, you just need to be a bit more open-minded. But yeah, we've we've got the idea of uh, a bit more masculine. So anyway, let me tell you which are my favorite. It's definitely going to be Neroli Voyage that I'm going to purchase probably for um, spring or something. Uh, Honey Hood, uh, definitely one of my favorite hoods um, that I ever smelled, I have to say. Um, then uh, I did love Lily of the Valley, uh, Chypress, uh, Bergamotto as well is lovely. Mm. The jasmine, um, yeah, but like I, I tell you, like um, there's a lot of fragrances that really need to be discovered. I would say have a little try in the boutique if you have one uh, next to your place. But these are fragrances that if you're looking for something um, timeless, uh, very elegant without being too discreet, but slightly intimistic, um, you want something to impress by not being crazy opulent and you want something very classy and british um this is definitely what you need to go for uh, i mean it's got what i really like about this again it's got that strong uh, dna that yeah it's just elegance in really simplicity and 
all of them's got a bit like of warmer, creamy undertone, which is delightful, I have to say. But it's really fragrance like uh, you need to discover and wear because otherwise you won't be able to see how great they are. You really need to wear it on your skin to be able to see how it dries down because this is where I feel they get their all potential. So it's already been 32 minutes I'm talking, so I'm gonna stop here. Uh, but yeah, I think I get my general impression and um, please tell me in the comment if you if you were if you're still here you're probably not still <laughs> and tell me in the comment uh, which one is your favorite which one do you not like what do you think about the brand I mean I love the story of the brand I love that there's a big strong heritage behind and um, I think this is what I like the most about this brand and uh, for me, like, uh, we definitely need to share a bit more about this because this, I would say, I think can it was there since centuries and can go again for a few centuries without smelling as modern as it is right now. So, yeah, that's it really. So, um, I wish you a good evening or maybe a good evening to me because I'm going to go to bed now. And uh, I will see you soon. Bye now. So you're on the street